it is a great honor to introduce the Nobel Laureate in Literature, author Mu Yen. He is the recipient of the 2012 Nobel Prize for Literature. His work has been translated into over 20 languages, and he is revered by readers and filmmakers the world over. He has been hailed as a writer who, with hallucinatory realism, merges folk tales, history, and the contemporary. He is known as a writer of indigenous culture, and his work frequently uses bold primary colors of these indigenous cultures, such as those depicted in Zhang Yimou's film Red Sorghum, adapted from Mo Yan's book of the same title. Mo's winning the Nobel Prize has not only aroused interest in his work, but in Chinese literature as well. Yet for a country whose literary tradition dates back thousands of years, just what exactly does this win mean? Well, it's been a while since the first heat wave from media has died down, and now that you have time to think about your receiving this Nobel Prize in Literature, what do you think is the significance of you receiving this Nobel Prize in Literature for Chinese Literature? It means that Chinese literature is now part of world literature. We have to admit that during the beginning and middle of the last century, for example, during the 50s and 60s, a lot of our literature put too much emphasis on foregrounding the revolution and class struggle, and that diminished their literary value. Writers then were asked to use class struggle as their topics. Because foregrounding the class struggle was a requirement, it was very hard for writers to depict humanity in a very objective way. This is what works of that period all lacked across the board. But since opening up and the 1980s, Chinese literature has accomplished a lot. Also, Chinese writers today are able to read a lot more books than before, especially when it comes to foreign literature. They have a very good understanding of humanity and what's happening in our country. So Chinese literature has become an important part of world literature. In this sense, my receiving the award is valuable. I don't think that my work is necessarily better than that of my peers. I'm simply one of a generation of writers. In fact, many of them, both younger and older, are very good. Born Guan Mo Ye to a family of farmers in China's Shandong province, he started writing while serving in the People's Liberation Army at the age of 21. While his pen name Mo Yan means to hush, his writings from garlic ballads to big breasts and wide hips afford poignant depictions of his native environment. That makes his work ideal for film adaptations, such as Im Ho's The Sun Has Years, adapted from Grandma Wearing Red Silk, Hua Jian Chi's Nuan, adapted from White Dog Swain, and Happy Times, directed by Zhang Yi Mo. <laughs> You're a prolific writer, and you have authored more than 10 books. And in each one, there is an attempt to discover something new, something different. But traditional Chinese literature tends to prefer works such as The Dream of the Red Mansion, which has been written and rewritten over a long period of time. How do you look at this? <laughs> It's true that some people dedicate their entire life to creating one masterpiece, while others are more prolific. And some of their works might stand out, while others may be quite mediocre. It depends on the writer's personality. But both of these cases have their advantages. Of course, we still see Dream of the Red Mansion as a masterpiece today. But if we follow the model of Dream of the Red Mansion in this day and age, it would be impractical because our lives today are very different from life then. It's more fast paced and more rich in many ways. So I think in terms of quantity, writers today are much more productive. 
Also, I think Dream of the Red Mansion was restrained by the publication processes then. Publishing a book at the time of Cao Xue Qin and Ku Song Lin was a colossal task. You needed to find people to make wood prints. You can imagine how much time it would take to make wood prints from the book. Today, in some of the fastest cases, a biography is published in a week, such as after an American president is sworn into office. That's the power of today's technology. So that's one reason why modern writers are more prolific than those during the days of Cao Xue's Qin. I hope that more of my work can be distributed in electronic form and on the internet. As an author, I don't have to think about publication when I'm writing. But of course, like other writers, I'd like to get my works read by as many people as possible. The internet is a really good platform. In the early 1980s, the only way for a writer to get his work published was by submitting to magazines, newspapers and publishers. I submitted a lot of work myself and was repeatedly rejected. <laughs> until one editor discovered me and I matured gradually from there. The publication platform is a lot more diverse now. There are many ways to get published. Writing blogs, for instance, is a form of publication too. Weibo or text messages is also a form of publication. We no longer have to publish through physical print since the emergence of the Internet. It's a lot more convenient. And as far as to how young writers can establish themselves and become known, we need relevant parties and institutions to seriously think about this, to be on the lookout for new talent, provide the necessary support and help them with publicity, which will mean more people will know about them. It's something for these relevant institutions to look into. Moyen's Nobel Prize for Literature will certainly help attract more attention to Chinese literature and bring about a golden harvest for the country's literary culture. Julian Wakan, CCTV.